Hi, and welcome to the Victory Church Podcast. We're so glad you could join us. If this ministry has impacted you in any way, we'd love to hear all about it. Please send us an email at share at victorychurchatl.org. We pray this message will speak to your heart. If you are a guest, if you're watching this message on YouTube or podcast, we welcome you to Victory. Welcome you to our 930 experience. Welcome you to week six, the second to last week of our series called Yahweh. Next Sunday will be the last Sunday in this series. If you are unfamiliar with that term, the term Yahweh is the holiest name ascribed to the Lord God Almighty, a name so holy that the Jews remove the vowels when they write down the name. And we've been attempting in this series, although every sermon will fall short, to talk about the holiness of God, the veneration of his name, the magnifying of his name, because, because we are living in a flesh pot, a wicked and cruel generation, a generation in which we are seeing the waning of Christian influence in our country and we are determined in this church especially from this pulpit to not remain silent do I have any believers with me that we refuse to remain silent yeah we just ordered like 500 bracelets to put one on everybody's wrist that says we will not remain silent to just keep reminding you that we've been called to what cry out all the more Take a stand for the Lord God Almighty in our time and our generation. Holy Father, the one before whom every knee will bow and every person will confess and every human being, whether they believe or not, will give an account of the decisions and deeds done in this life. I pray now, especially for the believer, you would open our eyes and our heart and give us a revelation this morning of someone else in this room besides yourself that we may leave here empowered and inspired. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much, gentlemen. You know, one of the one of the most important things I think for any human being, but especially for followers of Jesus. Listen to this word. We're gonna do a whole series on this word in June. But I want to I inject this word just to get it in your spirit this morning. One of the most important things for any human being, but especially for the follower of, Je- of, of Jesus, listen to this word, is identity. Because when you don't know who you are, Jesus. then you will have a tendency to sell yourself short to settle for things that you should not settle for, to indulge in things you have no business indulging in, and you don't even, you don't even understand who you are. When you don't know your identity, when you don't know who your father is, when you don't know your lineage or your heritage, you look in the mirror and see someone that God does not see. Come on. Uh, can we be real this morning? You, you look in the mirror and see someone that God does not see. So consequently, we know how this goes down in our society. When we be bound in relationships we should not be because we have no sense of identity. And we put up with things we should not because we have no sense of identity. And we stay places too long because we have no sense of identity. And we be involved in things that we should not because we have no sense of identity. But when you know... Somebody talk to me this morning. I feel something burning in my belly. But when you know who you are and whose you are, you get a different type of swagger in your walk. You watch carry yourself, watch this work differently. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Jerusalem. The most coveted place of real estate in the history of the world. A city like no other city in the history of the world. And I have traveled this country. I have traveled outside this country. I've traveled to so many cities. And I'm telling you, when we rolled into the city of Jerusalem, it had a different aura. It had a different feeling. There was something, watch this word, different about the city of Jerusalem. There was something, Danielle, different about the city of Jerusalem. Nothing like New York, nothing like London, not like Miami, not like Atlanta. There is something, watch this word, different about the city of Jerusalem. They are three major monotheisms, religions, that claim Jerusalem as, watch this word, holy. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all claim Jerusalem as holy. And so they say that this is the holy city. And even in the book of Revelation, Jerusalem is referred to as, watch, the holy city. A new version of it will come down out of heaven with God himself. And we'll be teaching about that at the end of the year when we get to the book of Revelation. And so Jerusalem, even in the Bible, is called holy. But there are other things attached to God that is also holy, like the Bible is called the Holy Bible, right? The Bible is called holy. The Word of God is called, watch this, holy. There are other things attached to God called holy, like the Spirit is called holy. The what? Holy Spirit, right? And there are other things attached to God that is called holy, right? Like the Lord's table is called holy communion, right? The Lord's table is called, watch, holy communion. And there are other things attached to God that is also holy, like the gospel message is also holy. I'm going somewhere with this. Hmm? The gospel message is also called, it's holy, There are other things attached to God that is also holy, like the Great Commission is also holy. The Great Commission of Jesus is holy. Now, I'm telling you, all these things attached to God are holy. And when we think about them, they're causing us a type of awe, a type of wonder, a type of fear, a type of reverence. Because when we think about them, we approach them with a little bit more, watch this word, respect, because we know that they are holy, right? But what then is the real meaning of holy? Is holy a long dress with no makeup and no earrings? Is holy a suit and tie with a collar on? Am I more holy because I wear a suit? Am I less holy because I got on ripped jeans and Timberlands on my feet? What then is really holy? Is Philip Anthony Mitchell holy? What then really is holy? You know what holy is? Holy is not a dress code. Holy is not not wearing earrings. Holy is not rolling up, not going to the movies. You know what holy is? And you know why these things are holy? Because holy means sacredly set apart. I'm going somewhere with this. Holy, can I teach? Holy means sacredly set apart. Now let's go back to the list. The Bible is holy. Why? It's not the only religious writings in the world, but it is set apart from every other writing. It's alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It speaks directly to the soul and the spirit. There's a Quran. There's a Quran. What the Mormons got. There's a pearl of great price. There are other writings, but nothing like the Bible that is holy because the Bible is set apart. from every other religious writing. What about the spirit of God? He's not the only spirit in the earth. I'm I'm going somewhere with this. The, The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit in the earth. He, not it, is not the only spirit in the earth. There are evil spirits in the earth, but he is the holy spirit. 
set apart from every other spirit. The Lord's table is not the only meal Christians eat. I'm going to eat with my family when this is over, but, that, but the Lord's table is set apart from every other meal that I'm going to eat, Melissa. Watch. The gospel message is holy. It's not the only message being preached, Chelsea, but it is separated from every other message that is being preached because inside the gospel message is divine power to snatch people from the fires of hell. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Unzip them from their unrighteousness. Woo! Zip them up with the power of the Holy Spirit and transfer them into the kingdom of light. No other message has the power to do that. You heard what I said? No other message has the power to transfer a person from eternal darkness to eternal light. So the gospel message is what? Holy. It is separated from every other message. The Great Commission is not the only work being done in the earth. But the, but the work of reconciling the loss to Jesus and multiplying disciples is set apart from every other type of work and endeavor. So the gospel work is, watch, holy. Why? Because it is set apart from every other work. But, my brothers and sisters, these are not the only things attached to God that is holy. So a businessman who was working his fisherman boat heard a man named John said, there is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he saw Jesus walking by the seashore and heard the call, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And this businessman named Peter heard, left and follow Jesus, betrayed him. But after Jesus was buried, raised and resurrected, he watched this word, I like this, restored Peter back to fellowship, empowered Peter with a commission, named him the pastor of the very first church in Jerusalem and set him out on a mission to preach this glorious gospel. In his old age, before he was crucified upside down, is how he died. Because no one is really going to die for a lie, hopefully. These men were formerly cowards. They died for a true message. And before he was crucified upside down, is how he died, he wrote a letter to Christians who were being persecuted about something else God called holy. He opens the letter. Oh, Jesus. This is in my... He opens the letter in 1 Peter talking about the power of salvation. How, watch, a holy God who is separated from every other false God pursues a people for himself. Woos them through this process called salvation in which he saves them from the darkness of the world, saves them from the power of sin, brings them into the kingdom of light. It is the most powerful experience a human being will ever have. And after Peter talks to them about the power of salvation in 1 Peter chapter 2, he writes them, he says to them in 1 Peter chapter 2 beginning in verse 1, he says, Because of your salvation, he says this powerful word, therefore. Because of your unmerited rescue from darkness. Because of your unmerited rescue from eternal damnation. Because I did something for you you could not do on your own. And because when you die, heaven will be your home. Because I rescued you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, evil desires towards others. 
rid yourselves of all deceit doing things that are foul and under the table. Rid yourselves of all hypocrisy, saying one thing on social media and living a different type of life in private. Rid yourself of envy, being jealous of your swipe. You, God called you to do your own thing. You ain't got to be jealous of their church, their ministry, their husband, their book. Their... Jealous for what? Jealousy is perversion. And when we're jealous, your heart will always be sick. Pause. Let me prophesy to somebody in this room. I prophesy to somebody right now, you are free from the perversion of jealousy in the name of Jesus. You have no need to envy anyone for you are fingerprint. God knows your name and he has called you. Jealousy is perversion. I don't need your weave, your nails, your car, your jacket, your husband, your ministry. Somebody say jealous for what? Say, jealous for what? Because they have more followers than you? Who cares? And slander of every kind. Now watch where Peter goes next. Verse 2. Like newborn babies, when we get saved, like newborn babies, watch this word, crave spiritual milk. That is, desire the word of God. Long for the word, long to come to church, long to be in the presence where the word is being preached. Desire spiritual milk. Without milk, babies watch, they die. And there's so many of us who are believers who are dying on the inside because we don't prioritize the spiritual milk. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord Yahweh is good. Now watch the rest. As you come to him, Yahweh who is good, as you come to him, Tiana. Man, I love the Bible. The living stone. Notice the capital in the S. Yes. Yes. The living stone, who is watch? Jesus, the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh in the body. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God, precious to him. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by man. I uh, Listen, I'm telling you right now, listen, it may hurt when people persecute you and say all men of evil against you. You know how this get down. When you get saved, your friends don't understand why you don't want to do the things you used to do. How many of us have dealt with trolls and haters because of salvation? Yes. And we pay them too much attention and we give them too much props because we have to remember that we are perfectly accepted by God Almighty. We are accepted by the only opinion that matters. Thank you for all of you that have been defending me on social media against all these trolls that keep creeping up on my page. I ain't paying them no attention because they're not going to shut me up and they're not going to keep me quiet. I'm going to cry out all the more whether they like it or not. We will not be rejected by men. Accepted by God. Verse 5. You also you ain't dead. The Holy Spirit is in you. You are a living stone. Are being built into together a watch spiritual house. This flies against radical individualism. I don't need no church. I don't need no friends. I don't need no community. I don't need no small group. I don't need no one. Lies. Lies. That is a lie of the devil. Y'all are being built up together as a spiritual house. Oh, I feel this in my spirit. A house to be holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices, praises, worship, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Next verse, 
For in the scripture it says, now Peter begins to quote Isaiah. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Verse 7. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Verse 8. And a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because... They disobey that holy message, which is always also what they were destined for. So he says, watch. Peter says, there's a stone. And this stone I have on my hand is a limestone I took from the city of Jerusalem. And it sits on my desk when I study. And it reminds me of how the scriptures calls Jesus a capstone. Now, in ancient Israel, in the days of the ancient, when they would build buildings, in order to build a building, they would clear off a foundation, and then they would take one stone, and they would put it on the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that stone was the necessary stone to build the entire structure. If this stone was off, If the stone on the corner was off, the entire building would be off. If the stone was not set in the right place, the entire building would be off. The Bible calls Jesus the cornerstone. That when something is not built on him, that life would be off. No matter what it builds on. It can build on money. It can build on degrees. It can build on houses, it can build on cars, it can build on titles and accolades and everything else. If the cornerstone is not underneath it, it will fall and topple. And Peter says, watch, Jesus the stone. This is so powerful. Watch. This is burning so bad in me, I just want to pray. He says, Jesus, the stone. Is in the path of every human being. They can't go over it. They can't go under it. They can't circumvent it. Every human being, as they travel into the future of their lives, is going to meet the stone. And they only have one of two decisions. The Holy Spirit is wooing people unto the Father. And those who feel that conviction, they go right when they feel the stone and they build on that stone. Others, they come in contact with the stone, and they say, I don't believe that message. And they reject that stone. And Peter says, for those who receive the stone, right, for those who receive the stone, they will never be put to shame. But for those who reject the stone... They're going to live their life now. But when they die, the weight of this stone is going to crush them into the powder of eternal damnation. Watch, because no one will escape the stone. They will either build on it or they will be crushed by it. They will either build on it or they're going to be crushed by it. 
Now, the scripture says no one comes to the Father. Watch. Let me get ready to land this plane. No one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws them. So that means everyone who is on top of the stone. God was involved. Amen. 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 He was involved in placing you on that foundation. Identity. God is holy, separated from every other being. Watch me bring this back. The Bible is holy, different from every other religious writing. The spirit is not the only spirit, but he is holy, separated from every other spirit. The gospel is not the only message, but it is holy, separated from every other message. The Great Commission is not the only work being done in the earth, but it is holy, separated from every other kind of work. But now there is something else attached to God that is holy. Verse 9. But you. (laughs) Identity. But you. You. Who keep seeing yourself wrong. Do I even have to read the rest for us to get a revelation? You. Who keep seeing yourself wrong. All this series we've been talking about God is holy. But you who've been seeing yourself wrong are a chosen place on the rock people. A royal priesthood. Is this blasphemous? You are a holy nation. Everybody wave your hand who's a Christian. Watch this. This is going to sound blasphemous. You are holy. That's the scripture, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> People belonging to God. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I know you know that you are loved. And I know that you know you are forgiven. And I know that you accept that you are chosen. You love that part. Royal? Man, we've outdone that to a fault. But when was the last time somebody told you that you are holy not in the context of God Almighty but separated separated to declare the praises of God Why don't you see yourself in the mirror that way? You know what will happen to you in terms of identity? If you go into your job and say, I am holy. I'm a part of a holy nation. I've been separated. How can I behave like everybody else around me? You go to your school. You say, I'm part of a holy nation. Something in your identity has to get a revelation that you have been called out. You can't act like and continue to function like everybody else because we are part of a holy nation. Let me finish the text, verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11. 
Dear friends, because of your salvation, because you're part of a holy nation, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world, we so attach to everything in this life. Last week I was praying in my prayer room and shedding tears and I went on my feeds and wrote, this is not my home and this is not my reward. No matter what platform I stand on, what title they try to put behind me, what I, this is not my reward. I'm not living for what I could amass now. Y'all don't know me. Philip Anthony Mitchell. I'm living for when I leave. This is not my home. And this is not my reward. I'm an alien, a part of a holy nation temporarily in place to be an ambassador of Jesus until he comes to get me. Abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. That is, fight the flesh. Some might say, man, I'm struggling with this sin. I'm struggling with this area. I'm sh struggling is a good thing. I w it is good to struggle than to yield. If you're struggling, you're in the right place. Man, I, man this porn keeps taking me down, but I fight it. This thing keeps taking me down, but I, that's a good thing that you're struggling. To struggle means you're in the right place. We're in the wrong place when we just yield and take a knee to the devil and his temptation. Romans chapter 7, the thing I want to do, I don't do. And what I should be doing, I don't do. And what I don't want, and Paul is talking about this. Man, so we fight against that flesh. And as long as we're struggling, we're in a good place. Who's struggling? Yeah, the person talking is struggling. And we're in a good place. Pastor, what are you struggling with? I'm trying to keep perversion out of my heart. I'm trying not to let people prop me up and I'm trying not to make sure I build something to myself and I don't, I, I, I don't, I want to make sure I don't, I don't spend too, too much time when people tag me or I don't want to glory in stuff that builds up my, I'm struggling. I got to push away that perversion and keep me low. Verse 12, live such good lives among the pagans. Live such good lives among because you're a holy nation. So live in such a way that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. When was the last time somebody told you? That you were holy. Now that you know what the meaning of holy is, that you will watch this set apart for the praises of God. And that because we're set apart, Chelsea, we should live in such a way for the outsider, the unbeliever, to say, there's something different about her. There is something different about him. There is something different about that couple. There's something different about that marriage. There is something different that draws or repels. Let me land this plane. My wife and I know a woman who over a decade ago, around the age of 21, was saved by a person who brought her into the kingdom with the gospel message. A new Christian with no church home, no small group, no one to show her the way meets a boy, a young man, who is a preacher. And she says to herself, well, because he's a preacher, surely he can show me the right way to live. And so they begin a relationship, a beautiful dance of love and lust. And they dance well. You fill in all the blanks for yourself. And every time they dance, she would feel bad about that dance. Not knowing that the Holy Spirit was dealing with her about her sin. Didn't have any context for what was happening. But every time they danced, she felt bad about that dance. And she would sit and watch him smoke weed. 
she would sit and watch him just get drunk. She would watch him dance with her and then get up every Sunday and preach. After some time had gone by of dancing, she said to him, man, something about this does not feel right. Doesn't this bother you? You preaching to people every Sunday. And the preacher says, God knows my heart. We, we, we got grace and mercy. Like, he ain't worried about all of that. It's one thing to struggle. There's another thing when a person who's supposed to be a part of the holy nation makes a mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how will Jesus respond to everyone who takes his name and makes a mockery of his name. Matthew, a follower of Jesus, wrote chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. He who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. Have we not preached? Have we not done ministry? Have we not said we belong to you but live like we was not a part of the holy nation? Have we not made a mockery of your holy name? No. Nah. Because we don't think that he paying attention to the way that we live right now. And there are so many people sitting in churches making a mockery of the name of Jesus when he is the one we should fear. And the most terrifying thing a human being will ever hear in the judgment when they stand before the one whom they made a mockery of. Yeah. You sang on that worship team. You were preaching every Sunday. You were doing all that ministry on Facebook Live and all that stuff, but man, you lived like the devil. And I'm not talking about the person who's struggling. I'm talking about the person who loves iniquity in the name of Jesus. You make a mockery of his name. The most dreadful thing a human being will ever hear when they stand before that rock. Apart from me. Work of iniquity. You and I never had a real relationship. have respect for you and your testimony? You're part of a holy nation. A holy nation. And it's not just about morality. It's about 
my kingdom identity and the fact that I've been separated from the praise and the glory of God. But that preacher that was dancing with that woman, is he really a representative of the holy nation? I say to the Christian in the room, you are not ordinary anymore. And I'm going to challenge you to do something this week that you probably never even really thought of. You know what I'm going to challenge you to do this week? I'm going to challenge you to think about your consciousness everywhere that you go. Think about the nation you belong to. Just for one week, try. Walk into Walmart and think to yourself, I'm part of a holy nation. Man, there are people in here who don't belong to God. Maybe I pray as I walk through these aisles. You go to school, think to yourself, well, all these people, man, I'm part of a holy nation. I want to challenge this week to elevate your consciousness that you're part of a holy nation. I mean, how should that affect the way you treat others? How should that affect the way that you post? How should that affect the way you live? How that should affect the way that you, how should that affect the way that you walk? I'm part of a holy nation. How does that affect your witness and your testimony? This week, I want you to live with a consciousness that not only all these other things are holy. Who said that? Shout that, brother. So are you. Not only are all these other things holy, but so are you. But brother, they don't believe that. So I got to close with scripture so people know I'm not a heretic. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. It's on the screen. But just as he, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy. And how much? All that you do. Be holy. Be separated in all that you do. For it is written, be holy, because I, Yahweh, am holy. Eternal God and ever wise Father. We stand on the stone that the builders rejected. We who stand on the cornerstone of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every one of us now standing on that stone. That you would give us a revelation of our identity. chosen, royal, and holy people, separated from the evil of this world to image the glory of the light of your kingdom to a lost and dying and dark society. I pray now for my brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters. Give them a revelation of their kingdom identity as belonging to a holy nation. And may they live with a consciousness of that identity that affects them in the way that they live the way that they talk, the way that they conduct themselves, the way that they pray, the way that they engage the unbeliever. May we be elevated in our identity from feeling like worthless people just struggling. Mm. 
May you help us to see that we have been branded with these three kingdom tags, chosen, royal, holy. May it not lead us into pride and arrogance, but into humility of gratitude and a life lived out for the glory of the rock that we stand on. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. And let those who have eyes to see, see. What the Spirit is saying to the church. Your holy people. In the mighty name. Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We truly hope this message resonated with you and encouraged you in Christ. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, please support the spread of the gospel by visiting us online and choosing the giving option that works best for you. And again, thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next week.